Hello everyone, and welcome to this video where I'll be setting up a GitLab cluster inside of Kubernetes, uh, inside of GKE to be particular. Um, what you can see here is that uh, the only thing that I've done so far is set up an environment variable uh, cluster name which contains uh, the name of the environment that I want to set up just for my own uh, reference and to make this easy. Uh, and then I've run a gcloud container clusters create uh, with that cluster name uh, in order to actually create the uh, cluster that we're going to deploy to. I've done that off camera because it takes a few minutes to do that, but that really is the only step that I've done. Um, you can see here the machine type that I'm using is an N1 standard 2 uh, with three nodes. Um, that will give me enough capacity uh, to run everything inside of GitLab in the production configuration, uh, as well as a little bit of headroom uh, so I can deploy a couple Go apps later. Uh, my plan for this series is to actually do some live coding of microservices using this instance that we're going to set up today uh, and then uh, show how GitLab CI CD can help uh, you go from coding uh, to delivering that software in production very, very easily. Uh, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Jason Lenny and I'm the product manager for CI and CD here at GitLab. Um, I've personally got a long career in doing build engineering, release engineering, um, release management, uh, and a lot of things in the continuous delivery and continuous integration space. Um, so I'm excited uh, to share some of uh, what I've learned with you today. Uh, but to start, uh, we're just going to be setting up this environment. Um, so um, the first thing that we need to do now that we've got uh, our cluster up is set up a static IP. Uh, and I have a command here, uh, which I can execute, um, that will create this IP, uh, which I'm giving the cluster name uh, just for my own reference again, uh, so I can find these things later. Uh, inside of our GitLab internal project uh, in my region. I live in Europe, so that's why I'm doing that. Uh, and then with the network tier set to premium. The reason for that is that we're using uh, premium load balancing inside of the Helm chart. Uh, so um, this is what you need to do in order for that uh, configuration to work. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. And then the other thing that I need to do um, before I can set up Tiller or anything else like that is actually uh, to switch to the admin user uh, give my own personal account uh, permissions on the cluster, uh, cluster admin. Uh, and um, the reason for that is that Google Cloud uh, GKE does not uh, give you that permission by default. Even if you're the person who created the cluster, you don't get that access. So the first thing I've done here is run a command that uh, gets the uh, cluster uh, description and uh, finds the password in it, cuts it out, and sets it inside of this admin, admin pass variable. Uh, I'm going to use that now uh, to um, set credentials for the admin user, um, set that context so that I'm actually able to run commands as that user. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is make my own personal email address, um, my own personal user as defined here by gcloud config get value account. And really that's just going to be my personal email address, my GitLab email address. Uh, and then um, now, uh, I have cluster admin access, so I can switch back to myself. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. So gcloud beta container clusters, get credentials, just grab your own personal credentials. All right, um, so a few steps there, just kind of basic configuration within the Kubernetes cluster. Um, now what we're going to do is go ahead and get Tiller set up. Um, so the first thing to do there is create the service account uh, for Tiller. Um, the problem though is that this is not, does not have any permissions. Um, so uh, I have a YAML file here um, called uh, Tiller Cluster Role Binding YAML that all it does is set up the uh, access for, uh, for this account. Um, so we'll go ahead and create that. Um, that's done. Uh, now um, we can start with the Helm installation. So uh, we'll init that um, using the service account Tiller. Uh, we also need to grab um, the uh, GitLab repo uh, and mention uh, and, and, and connect that with, uh, with Helm on the local system um, so that it can get that. Uh, and then we'll do an update so that it knows about all of the charts that are in that repo. Um, so now Helm knows about the uh, GitLab chart uh, and we can run the installation. There's one last thing to do. Um, in order to uh, make all of this work, uh, we need to have uh, that static IP available to us. Um, so similar to that command with the admin password, um, I've got a, a static IP environment variable that I set here by describing the address for the cluster name that I set up earlier. Um, so we can see that that is, um, in this case, this. All right. Um, so uh, one more thing that I'm going to do before we actually run the Helm chart 
is set up uh, that IP address in, as an A record within DNS on one of our uh, internal domains, uh, gogitlab.com. Um, so you can see here that I'm running gcloud DNS, uh, setting the project to our internal project that we use, uh, and then starting a transaction for the gogitlab zone. Uh, then um, I add the A record as follows. Um, you can see that it's just adding that static IP uh, as a type A record uh, to the domain. Uh, and then we complete the transaction uh, and commit that. Um, so it does say pending, but it really just takes a second or so uh, to do that. If I pull up a browser, um, you'll see that uh, that's probably actually already done. Yeah, so we can see here that this IP has been set uh, and the DNS resolution should start uh, anytime now. All right, um, so now it's time to run the Helm upgrade. Um, there's a few variables that we set here. Uh, and I'll show you what those are on the command line here. Um, so what we're going to do is run uh, install uh, of the GitLab chart with a timeout of 600. It won't take anywhere near that long, but just in case there's a problem, we do set that timeout. Uh, we set the global host domain to the cluster name uh, .gogitlab.com. Um, it's going to set up a Let's Encrypt uh, certificate, so HTTPS works on this domain. Um, so the way that I've set up everything here in DNS and with the way I've named things, is so that this name will work. Um, Global.host.external IP, it just maps to that static IP we created earlier. And then the cert manager issue email is just me. Uh, in the end, the uh, actual way you connect to this host will be as gitlab. Dot, in this case, jlenny-gitlab.gogitlab.com. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. It should just take a minute uh, as Helm pulls everything together uh, and start sending it up to the server. Uh, when Helm returns, it won't quite be done yet because it still needs to provision all of the pods and everything. Um, but um, what will happen is that, uh, is that Helm will take care of all that for you and then Kubernetes will then make sure that the pods are created, instantiated, that the ingress works. It'll automatically connect the IP address uh, to the ingress uh, and then uh, go to Let's Encrypt and get a certificate for the domain. Uh, and everything should be up and running, including a runner, uh, with auto scaling, including uh, all of the core functionality of GitLab, and we should be good to go for where we're going to continue this series uh, and start doing some live coding in order to see what happens uh, when you build a microservice from scratch uh, inside of GitLab and deploy it using the GitLab CFCD features. Um, so uh, this will take a few minutes and then uh, the page will be up, um, but um, I won't have you sit here and watch that. Uh, this is really all there is to it. Um, you can check your workloads in the Kubernetes cluster to see when this is done, or even just check within uh, GitLab here. So we, or sorry, within Helm. Um, so we can do a Helm status uh, um, of GitLab uh, and get the latest on where this is at. So you can see that some of these things are waiting for dependencies. So the ingresses are waiting for the services that they depend on. Um, but once all of that's done, once all these pods are initialized and running, all of this will come up and be good to go. Uh, if you see things in here like uh, insufficient resources, uh, you're, you should check your Kubernetes cluster and make sure that you do have enough uh, resources. And as I mentioned earlier, that's about 16 gigs of RAM uh, and six vCPUs is the, the main requirement. Um, so I hope this was helpful um, and looking forward to continuing this series and uh, seeing where we go from here. Thank you.